Welcome to the How To Home Podcast presented by FilterBuy. I'm your host, Aaron Massey, a DIY home improvement enthusiast and full-time content creator running MrFixItDIY.com. Alongside me is my co-host, Tracy Pendergast, a home and lifestyle blogger operating her website, HeyTracy.com. Each week, we'll cover the real world ups and downs of owning a home, answer your questions, and if we don't have the answers, we'll talk to some experts to help you get the most out of your remodel, repair, and home improvement project. So without further ado, let's start the show. My name's Aaron Massey, and welcome back to another episode of the How To Home Podcast. We are excited to be here. I am joined, as always, with my co-host, Tracy Pendergast. And uh, we are the resident experts today because we are talking about childproofing. And between us, we have three kids under the age of four. So we've been through this relatively recently, or I'm still kind of going through it. I'm sure you are as well. Yep, and they're all still alive. That's right. So, so far we are winning. Winning with the childproofing game. (laughs) We are going to be sharing some of our favorite tips, some of our favorite products as far as childproofing goes, and just talk to you about things that you can do around your home to make sure that you are keeping your children as safe as possible. I know they can get into literally everything. So we're going to talk about some things that hopefully will help you out if you are maybe uh, thinking of having kids or you have some very young children who are getting to be into the age where they are getting into things like mine is. Or you're babysitting. (laughs) Or maybe you have grandkids and you haven't had to baby-proof your home in a while. Actually, a third of child injuries happen at home. I think that's where you kind of get in your comfort zone and don't think about things that could be potentially hazardous. So you really want to, we'll go down the list and and give everyone some tips. Also, I think people just think of childproofing as for like little kids, but there's childproofing that extends to older kids than toddlers. Um, And we'll definitely talk about that. And then obviously you want to be careful with your children around any type of water. So Pool safety is a, a big one, especially here in Southern California as For sure. well. So before we get into that, uh, I just want to remind the audience that if they want to call in and leave us a voicemail at any time for any questions or tips or any answers that they're looking for, maybe a little bit of advice on or questions that they're looking for a little bit of advice on, sorry, um, our number is 978-709-1040. You can call us 24 hours a day, just leave us a voicemail and we'll do our best to incorporate it in the show. Or you can email me at Aaron at HowToHome.com. And uh, if you don't want to talk on the phone, you can leave me uh, an email as well. And we'll we'll try to touch on some of those. And we want to take a moment to thank our founding partner of the How To Home podcast, which is FilterBuy. They are a direct-to-consumer HVAC filter manufacturer. They manufacture all their products right here in the U.S. And they can ship anywhere in the U.S. within... 24 hours, including custom size filters. Yep. And you can save 5% when you subscribe. So you just set your size and how often you want it and you forget it and your filters will just roll on in. We have signed up for it in our household and we have two units. All you have to do is you go on the website, you put in your information. I think a lot of people don't realize that they should be replacing their air filters typically every three months, depending on the usage. So we have ours set to deliver every three months and you never have to remember to change it. You don't have to set an alert. You don't have to do any of that. It just shows up to your door and then you go, oh, I got to change my filter. And it's that simple. It takes you five minutes to do and it's really easy to sign up. So you can save the 5% by subscribing. Make sure you guys go check out filterby.com. So let's dive into our topic today, our child proofing thing, something that I am constantly finding new things. My son now being over a year, literally within the last week or two, is now walking. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole new Let ball the game, game. Begin. Yeah, as far as what he's getting into. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you've been through this with your children being... Oh, yes. I have a two-year-old and a three-year-old. So if it is not nailed down, they will rip it apart and destroy it. If it is nailed down, they will stand on it, find something they can rip down higher and destroy it. Toddlers are crazy. And then team up with each other and do twice the damage. They're destructive, man. No respect, these kids. Unfortunately, some things that are dangerous, you don't even realize until you see something potentially dangerous happening. And I think we have a little bit of different perspective Mm -hmm. uh, as far as our approach to childproofing. Because for me, lock it up however you can do it. Get it out of out of the way, make sure they can't get into it. I don't care what it looks like. I'll slap pool noodles on the bumpers of anything (laughs) sharp and call it a day. 
Right. But for you, I think you you like a little bit more of a aesthetic. You want to keep it homey, right? Well, you're about function and I'm so happy for you. (laughs) That is awesome. I listen, we can't have nice things in our house already, right? Our I have yogurt smeared all over my couches. I have baby wipes. It's it's disgusting. So my last sh- shred of dignity uh, is left in these in these little corners where you want me to now put gates and plastic covers and everything else. So you can keep your kids really safe, but I think there's still a way to do it where it's aesthetically pleasing it's not you don't want to feel like you're living at a daycare center right yeah i could see that but i think uh like you don't, you wouldn't put interested. tennis balls like right. on the corners of your table like y- you want to do something that looks kind of nice with your design right especially if you have guests over and stuff you don't want it to be right you know and i'm not i'm not petty i want my kids to be safe that's my number one priority but if there are these products out there where you can be safe and your house can still look Nice. Like a home. Then why yeah. not? Let's yeah. So I'm I'm excited to hear some of your you know your products because like I said you've been through this now twice and I'm just getting through some of it now so mm-hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what your advice is and maybe I can share some of my thoughts with you as far as what I think works and right go from there. So my first one is actually you're gonna think it's weird because it's in the safe we're talking about safety but it's actually a slow closing potty and a toddler seat that is actually in the inside of an adult seat. So I'll tell you the two reasons why it's more safe and I'll also tell you why it helps with aesthetic. It helps with aesthetic because it looks like a totally normal toilet top. It's an adult toilet top but when you open it in the lid there's a toddler potty that comes down. So safety wise you don't have a potty that's rocking back and forth where your child can potentially fall which did happen to my son and it's a lot more sanitary because your child's going right into the potty and then also I have a little boy. Oh man you have a little boy. Mm -hmm. So many things regarding their it's it's going to be magical for you let me tell you. So when they're standing and they really like to push their limits with um, distance and aim, but I'm sure you know that you're you're a man. Yep. Um, you don't want a potty that could like potentially fall down quickly onto them. It's super dangerous. They could get really hurt. So these potties, they're Bemis, the brand that, and we'll link it in the show notes. They're Bemis. They're slow close. So you take out the whole potential of them falling off. You take out the anti-sanitary part and then also you protect their body parts you know you don't want that lid closing down on them does it have any kind of so my son right now is big into you know any anytime we're in the bath in the bathroom trying to you know get ready for bath time or whatever he's walking around he immediately tries to go over to the toilet and lift the toilet seat up Mm -hmm. and like reach down in there which of course is disgusting (laughs) uh does it latch down as well or this particular the bemis one does not but you can buy, they basically just look like little side clamps and you can attach them and they'll they'll lock into place. That's a separate thing, but you can just grab those on Amazon or Home Depot. Target. Yeah, I'm thinking about throwing one of those on there because he immediately tries to go for it like a dog drinking out of the toilet. And I'm like, no, let's not do that right <laughs> no. now. Yeah, well, if he does have an interest because you do forget to relatch things i would definitely suggest just getting the slow close potty now and then it's just there when you're ready and when kids come over it's great people are always like you're awesome you have a kid potty people don't have to bring their kids over and bring their their own toilets and all things i never thought i'd be proud of in my 20s (laughs) another one i have is the hiccupop foam bed bumpers so you've seen the gate, the bed rails that go on the sides of Yeah, kind beds. of they're open on the foot end kind right. of thing so they can't roll out. Exactly. So these would be for a little bit of older children that are not, that are like walking, climbing, you know, my three-year-old. You put it under the sheets. So when you make the bed, you can't even see it. It's basically like a, a bowling bumper rail. So it's a bumper rail. You put it under the sheets. It has like grip. And um, when they like roll over in the middle of the night, they kind of feel the lip and then they don't fall out of bed. They're really great. Um, My other one, my husband thought I was crazy when they arrived. They are LED nightlights for the bedroom and they're red and they produce melatonin. Okay. 
So you don't want your, uh, eventually your child will wake up in the middle of the night, especially when they're potty trained and get up in the dark. So you don't want them, they need a nightlight in there, but white light will disrupt sleep. Blue light disrupts sleep. You want something that makes everything visible in the room and protects them from falling into something potentially hazardous, but doesn't disrupt their sleep because let's face it, we're not getting any sleep. Right. And anything that disrupts my sleep more, I am going to throw in the trash besides exactly. my trap. Um, so I really, really like these night lights. They're on Amazon. And again, they are called Sleep Aid Red LED Night Lights. So they're on all the time. They don't. They no. They actually they they light? have sensors. So um, they're when when it's dark, they they pop on. And then my last one is uh, they're the clear corner protectors. So obviously, as much as we want to keep our counters and our tables, the integrity of them. My kids are like right at the age where they where they will walk right into corners. So these ones are clear. They're made of medical grade plastic and. Um, they just they're rounded so if any little heads go into the corners they are completely safe but they're virtually invisible they're they're clear i really like those as well i have some similar ones on my list of products that i really love mm -hmm. um but mine are they're not clear versions they're like padded kind of they're brown most of them you can get them in different colors because like i have a coffee table that i put them on for example and the coffee table's brown so i just oh, so they match yeah they match it fine um, but again, I'm not opposed to throwing a pool noodle on the, you know, slicing a pool noodle down the middle and wrapping it around the table either. Right. But yeah, it's an aesthetic thing. And I think you go through a phase where you're okay making those like really obvious, you know, safety rigs for your kids where the whole house can look like it's a daycare center. But eventually right. you kind of want to evolve out of that. As you're getting rid of baby gear, you want your house to kind of become a more mature home again. And that's when I suggest these products for sure. So on my list, I've got a bunch of stuff. There's um, as far as the cabinet latches and stuff goes, which there's a ton of products out there as far as cabinet latches go. And my son, that's his new thing. Like he wants to be opening up every cabinet all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I originally bought these ones that are, they stick on, they're, you know, they kind of open the cabinet slightly and then you depress the thing on the top and it kind of latches under the inside of the cabinet. So and then from your the cuticle outside, stays inside and then you... Yeah. <laughs> so from the outside, they look normal. You mm -hmm. know, you have normal looking cabinets, but I hate them. Mm -hmm. I, uh, there's two... So far, I've not found ones that I like uh, from that perspective. They, those ones, they peel off super easy. Like my son pulls on them hard enough and they just, the adhesive pops right off. Uh, I bought them on Amazon. I'll link to the ones not to buy because those are the ones that I have. But I do like these ones and uh, they're, I think they're made by a company called Munchkin and they, uh, they're just straps. They're kind of general purpose uh, adhesive straps mm -hmm. and they go on the face of a cabinet or I have them on a bunch of different things. I have one actually on my dishwasher as well because you know, that dishwasher door, he's now tall enough to grab the handle and then, yeah. you know, pull the dishwasher door right down onto himself and kind of crush himself under the dishwasher door, which is a little heavy. Um, or grab knives out of the inside, or, like yeah, my daughter. Grab anything or even just, you know, dirty plates and dishes and grossness. So I put one on there and they're great. They're just, uh, they're ad adhesive back. They, you depress the sides of them and they kind of uh, latch over this little nub inside mm -hmm. and you can unlatch them either way and they're versatile you can use them on like i said you can use them on cabinets you can use them on doors you can use them on drawers whatever um so i really like those those are the probably my favorite of all the products that we've used thus far and then obviously you know a big issue is you know you don't want your kids getting into electricity or anything like that putting stuff in the outlets so there's always the the obvious i guess uh, or somewhat obvious outlet plugs you know you've seen them probably since the 80s or whatever they're just the plastic inserts that go into the outlets i don't know what it is about kids that they get so attracted to anything that they shouldn't be yeah that they go straight to it and uh so we've put these little plastic inserts on all the outlets and you know they're i don't know 99 cents for you know a 20 pack or something like that they're yeah. super affordable very you know very cheap and easy to install so i love those one day, my son told me that the wall bit him. 
I said, what did you do to the wall to make it bite you? He's like, I stuck my finger in the wall and it bit me. Uh -oh. I was like, oh. You got an outlet. You're lucky to be alive. My son likes to go for, I have a carbon monoxide detector plugged in. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of right outside his door. Mm -hmm. And oh my goodness, he goes for it every time. It's like. Ooh. Because he wants to destroy the thing that is protecting him, and keeping him safe. That's how they work. Yeah. But if he ever hit the alarm button on it to test it. Oh my God, he would go bananas. Like he would just, because it's so loud. Mm -hmm. it, I remember I set it off to test it one day. Oh my God, it was like the most obnoxious sound you've ever heard. But so I really like those products. And the other thing that I've recently gotten into uh, is these anti tip straps. I've heard about them, you know, a bunch of times, but uh, I didn't really see the benefit of them necessarily or whatever. But uh, recently my son has. Anytime I'm changing him, you know, he, he likes to reach into the drawers and grab the clothes out. Mm -hmm. And now that he's standing and walking, there's multiple drawers open at the same time and the dressers and he's grabbing on and pulling on the dresser drawers like towards him. So, you know, once the drawers are extended and the weight of the clothes is in the front of the dresser, well, they're, it's top heavy or front heavy right. and it tip over and crush them. So uh, the, the anti-tip straps, you attach them to the wall. They're super easy. You just kind of screw them in to a stud. Hopefully you can get a stud or use a, a wall anchor of some kind mm -hmm. and drill a hole in. You can't really see them if you put them behind the cat, uh, the dresser or the cabinet or whatever it is that you're trying to secure, but they work great. And can you use them on TVs too? You can use them on TVs. You can use them on any big appliances that you're worried about tipping over or they're pretty versatile as far as what they can be attached to. So I, I really recommend those. You know, that's probably my four or five favorite products that, you know, that I've used thus far. But again, I'm kind of just starting to get into some of these things now that my son is walking. So the one other thing that I do really like is we have pretty much hardwood fo uh, floors throughout. Mm -hmm. So we use the kind of the puzzle piece style uh, foam floor foam blocks, mat. foam mm -hmm. mats. I love them because now they have a lot of different, speaking to your point, as far as aesthetically going, they have a lot of different looks on them. You know, you don't have to just get the traditional kind of letter ones. Right. You can get them to look like Persian rugs now. It's yeah, you amazing. Can get them to, so if you want something that provides the safety of the kid falling on the hardwood floor, bonking their head or whatever, um, you can get them now to kind of look. Yeah, like what you're saying, like a Persian rug or or match your flooring or whatever. There's all kinds of patterns and looks. So your house doesn't look like a daycare. But I really like those because he's falling a lot. And so any play area we can easily outfit with the foam uh, mats. And two, you don't realize how much time you spend on the floor, right. you know, playing with them and stuff. So your knees, your elbows. Getting up is your, the hard oh, part. <laughs> everything. So, you know, you're constantly on the floor playing with them. So anything you can use those floor mats for four is, uh, you know, saves your joints and muscles and all the body aches that comes with getting older. Oh, conversations you just didn't think you'd have. Yeah. So I actually have a list from the CDC of different zones in your house where there are the most potential hazards. And I thought maybe we could run down them and talk about any other products that might be good. The first one is water. So in the bathroom, kitchen, swimming pools, hot tubs. Um, one thing I really love for the bathtub is the cover for the spout. Yeah. And mine also has a temperature reading and it will blink red if the water's too hot. So sometimes I shouldn't be saying this, but like my kid's room is right next to the, the bathroom. So I'll just like go grab their pajamas and come right back in sometimes. I know that if one of them pulled the spout while I was gone and it like started getting hot, I would hear an alert in that, you know, things happen in 15 seconds. So I really do like that, the heat sensor, and it covers the spout so they can't hit their head. Yeah, speaking of bath time, we, we had something similar that, that was really great for that. Uh, we had a, uh, we had kind of this like rubber duck inflatable mini bathtub mm -hmm. for when he was, you know, very small. So you don't have to use the entire tub kind of thing. And it actually, the bottom of it has a heat sensor in it. So if the oh, water, it turns color. yeah, it changes a different color. So if the water got too hot, you know, or above the recommended temperature for a, you know, for an infant, it would change color. So there was several times where I filled the water up and I'm thinking this water's totally fine mm -hmm. temperature wise for me. But then you're like, oh, it's a little probably too hot for a baby, you know, for baby skin. Right. So 
uh, something you don't really think about that I thought that was a great product. And then also now, now that we've kind of aged out of that, mm-hmm. uh, one thing that we really like is uh, an insert to put in the bottom of the tub that is, uh, you know, like they're kind of like the adhesive gel things. Slip free. Yeah, the slip free mats right. to go in the bottom of the tub because you don't realize how top heavy, you know, kids are, especially in the bathtub and they just slip and it just takes one second for them to slip. Even if, when you have your hands on them and they're soapy right. and stuff, they With slip and fish. boom, you know, smack their teeth, their baby teeth and right. it turns into a nightmare. It's on your watch, the mom's mad, yeah. and no one's happy. We covered some water, but also- cool. Pool is obviously a huge thing. There's a whole nother, you know, we could get into pool safety all in its own and maybe we will down the line, but obviously you want to fence off the area as much as possible. Make sure it's a secure latch, childproof latch of some kind on your fence so that your Absolutely. your kids and their friends and everybody else can't get to it. But that's a whole Scary. nother thing. But Yeah, and that stuff happens. Fast. And they do have the pool alert things now as well, where they kind of anything that breaks the surface tension of the water it will set off an alarm either in the house or on your phone. At least you know, you know, if something falls in your pool, whether it's a animal or a kid or... Right, and I wanna share because I want parents to understand how, I've, I consider myself a very attentive mom, but how quickly things can happen. Um, my son's in swim lessons. He knows that he cannot swim without floaties, or I thought he knew that. Um, we were in the Cayman Islands this, this last summer and, um, I told Max, you stand right here on the step while I turn around and I'm going to put the floaties on Sammy. And I literally like what is five seconds, I turned around and I'm putting the floaties on Sammy and I turned back around and he's like this, like drowning. And, um, it was the scariest thing. I actually like, I thought maybe he dry, would dry drown. Like there's water in his lungs. It happened so fast, probably in five seconds. And I asked him later, like, did you fall in? What happened? And he said he, he just is so used to having his floaties. He said, I just stepped in and I couldn't swim. So these things happen really fast. It's not just to moms or dads that are not attentive to their kids. And it's just always thinking like a toddler and being one step ahead of it because Mm -hmm. Yeah, stuff happens. Yeah, and it happens fast. Um, So heat or flames. So um, the kitchen, fireplace, and grill, those knob covers are awesome um, if you have an oven like I do where they could turn knobs. One thing that I, you know, is an easy thing that you can do if you have like a wood-burning fireplace, for example, a lot of times everybody has the tools sitting right next to the fireplace. You will not be able to have that. The kid will try to grab those, you know, wrought iron tools in a second and... Be Hercules. And impale themselves with them. Second thing being, find yourself a a grate um, of some kind. You know, they have decorative ones. They have all sorts of different options that you can cover the fireplace with to keep them, one, from climbing in the ash. You know, if you have even even a clean fireplace, you're always going to get that black soot mark on you if it if it's a wood burning fireplace and even if it's a gas one to that on that side of things the uh, the keys for the gas starters the little things right. that you put into the floor or wherever the the valve is to turn the gas on make sure you're keeping that key separate you know I keep it up on the heart on the mantle right. up above where the fireplace is well I always think about it we buy our kids these like keys I to know. like work on their fine motors and like those latch boards where we teach them how to unlock yep. like every sort of latch like, what are we teaching our children? Everything. They're teach, we're teaching them how to sabotage everything that we're doing. Like how to put the fire starter into the, yeah. and like turn it. Like we are training them to do these things. The knob covers are great. They also have the doorknob ones. Mm-hmm. Um, those work really well. Fortunately for me right now, my son is not tall enough to reach all of that stuff. So I haven't had to go down that route yet. I'm very surprised how smart he is already in that sense where he's constantly trying to open the cabinet and he, for those latches that I was telling you, I don't like because he can actually yank the cabinet open if he pulls hard enough. He actually realizes where the latch is and is trying to like solve it. Oh yeah. They figure it out quick. And uh, he did the same thing on an, uh, I just recently fenced off the backyard. Mm -hmm. Um, and I put a gate on there to keep him from falling in an area. And the other day he was standing up, holding on to both, you know, onto the fence and just shaking it. And he knew it was a gate. And then he's like, looks up and he sees the latch for where the thing is, mm-hmm. is latched. And he's reaching up, trying to undo it. I'm like, I, 
Whoa. What? What? Whoa. Slow down, dude. You just started standing up. Like, you just started walking. Let's not figure out the latch, okay? Oh, yeah. They're give me persistent. Like, give me like two weeks at least before you start figuring out how to undo everything I'm trying to stop mm-hmm. you from doing. At two and three, all of our baby gates just got removed because they're obsolete now. They know how to open all of them. Or the big one will open it for the little one and laugh and run away and mm-hmm. frame her. Um, next is, I think everyone kind of considers this, the toxic substances. So we're talking kitchen sink, medicine cabinet, garage, shed, the purse where, you know, where medications are stored. And I think it's just keeping all of that way out yeah. of reach. For me, uh, our, our cleaning supplies, everything is up high or in a locked cabinet. We kind of are the stereotype, I think. We we keep all the cleaning supplies right under the sink where like, you know, I think a lot of people do. Um, basic. But we, yeah, we, <laughs> cabinet straps and the other stuff. And it's a great idea to, to put stuff up high. Anything that is dangerous, I mean, put it up as high as you can get it, you know, right. top shelves of the cabinets, whatever that they, you know, so they can't get into it as much as possible. But the other thing is garages. You know, I keep a lot of highly kind of toxic stuff in my garage, um, which maybe you wouldn't necessarily consider keeping a lid on, but I have a, a deadbolt on because I have an attached garage. The garage is attached to the house. I keep a deadbolt actually closed from the inside that he, you know, so he can't get out of sight for five minutes and end up in the garage with power tools and toxins and everything Yeah, else. and like, you know, even something as small as ant spray or, you know, snail bait, these things are just so toxic and dangerous to our kids so that's a really good idea our shed is is locked as well the last one is potential for fall so stairs slippery floors high windows tipping furniture we touched on on a lot of that um one thing i i'm seeing now is a trend that i really like for stairways is the clear it's like plexi glass like yeah. what would the plastic be the plastic yeah. is plexiglass yeah. yeah so it's down the railing so that it you can still see through it and you can still kind of enjoy your staircase but kids can't put their limbs or head in between the bars is that at the oh i see what you're saying okay yeah, so it runs railing. down the, the railing okay mm-hmm. i thought you meant at the top like it's a clear gate or something no like. we have a gate at the top and the bottom but it's starting to not do us much good yeah we have uh we- Uh, mostly is the exterior stuff, you know, fencing, gating, putting stuff at the top of stairs to keep the kids from tumbling down. I mean, that's where where we're kind of spending the most of our effort right now because we don't have the stairs on the inside. Right. But I know the baby gates, you know, those are easy things to install and go up in a few minutes. You can get them on baby gates now. Yeah. And you can get them on Amazon. You can get them on, can't get them at Babies R Us anymore, but you can get, you know, you can get them at Target or Costco, any of those types of places. So plenty of options as far as that stuff goes. There's certainly a lot of things to consider when baby proofing your house under normal circumstances. Um, But if you're like me or currently you, you're also, your house may be going through some remodel projects at the same time. I constantly have projects going on in the house. So baby proofing and child proofing the home under remodel conditions is different, I guess. I just wanted to touch on a few things that you can possibly do to try and keep yourself and your family as safe as possible while doing a remodel, because I understand that to-do lists don't stop just because you have a kid. Right. And the majority of people can't afford to move out of their home during a remodel. I know we're all living at home through ours. Yeah. So you're going through, why don't you talk a little bit about yours? You're going through kind of a a huge project right now. And how are you actively working to keep your home and your kids safe while that's going on? So I think the first thing, if you're working with a contractor, um, is just stressing how important containment is to you. Um, we talked to the demo crew last week and in, I know I, you know, you feel kind of weird telling grown men this about like a job at your house, but it's important to me that things are blocked off and contained. Um, and I think that whether you're doing it yourself or you have people coming in, it's having areas that are specifically designated to work and making sure that those areas are safe, um, ladders, like not having a a drill on a ladder where it could like fall, keeping everything just super tight. And one thing that concerns me, not to like skip around, but is air quality, uh, paint and dust. So it's keeping that stuff contained as well and also running constant 
filters at our house. I wish I knew a place to get a filter. I know, can right? Can you think of one? Yeah, I can think of a place. It's called Filter Buy. <laughs> they're a proud sponsor of the How To Home Podcast. Made in I, the USA. They're made right here in the USA, <laughs> and I highly recommend that you guys check out filterbuy.com to get your air filters for your remodel projects. Change them out all the time. <laughs> to that point, though, <laughs> what we you're 100% dead on with the containment. Mm -hmm. What it what it requires to live in a live and work in a house under construction, whether or not you have kids, is containment. You have to contain the work to the area that it's in, or otherwise you are either you're putting yourself or your family in danger, and you're putting your own sanity at risk because. When stuff carries over from the work area to your living area and you can't get away from it, it's just too much. Well, I think Sanity left the building a long yeah. time ago. Well, what I think, you know, your best friend is obviously plastics, you know, like four to six mil plastics, which are a little bit thicker on the heavier duty side. It's easy, especially if you're if you're doing stuff on your own. They have there's a company that I've worked with in the past, and full disclosure, they've sponsored some videos of mine. So I've done dust containment videos, which you guys find on my uh, website or on my YouTube channel. It's a company called Trimaco, and they sell dust containment poles, is what they are, and they allow you to build basically a temporary plastic wall that you can put anywhere. You can put it you know, up to, I think, 14 feet tall or something. So they fit majority of applications and you can just build a temporary wall. And even if you don't have those poles, which I understand can be a little bit expensive, it's very easy to build a two by four frame and staple the plastic all around it. Build yourself legitimate rooms slash walls and contain the project that way. Any place you have an entry point or an exit point, wherever you have a crew or workers going in and out, um, use what's called a dust containment door. You know, they're plastic doors that go up, uh, you know, they zip up and down. So, and make sure whoever's using it, whether it's yourself or your contractors, or maybe you've got some help that's just helping you out, you you got to be religious about using it, you know, right. don't leave it open because dust and fumes and everything like that, especially if you have kids, it's so fine. it goes like dry. There's nothing finer than drywall dust that it will go anywhere that you let it. And talking about the air filtration thing. Uh, you have to cover those vents, you know, cover those air returns, cover all those things that are pulling all of that stuff into the rest of the home. You know, you want to make sure that you're creating kind of fully contained area where you are keeping everything, you know, whether it's good or bad in that space. Right. Uh, and that way, you know, you're, you're maximizing the potential to keep your, you know, your kids and family safe because yeah, it's hard. It's already hard enough to live in a place that you're, working on and adding a kid makes it another a whole level a whole extra level and then and the things you can't see like potential fumes are the things that scare me the most I know how to contain tools and you know materials but I that air quality is a big one especially for little kids and one thing we did to to make our tool system safer so it used to be that uh, tool was, tools would come in from the shed and then just get set on top of things during projects and then never make their way back out. So what we did is we got a whole bunch of the tubs that like the handles come up and like lock mm -hmm. and we made a painting bin, uh, the drill with all the drill bits bin. Like we, we put different project so they can similar be, tools together so they can be contained while the project is going without having to take them right in and out of the work you bring them all day. in together you use what you need you close it and you lock it and you bring them all back out and that's really really helped yeah that's a good tip and it allows you to keep kind of the work the job site clean too at the end of every day even if you keep them in the room at least you can put the tools in the bin latch them stack them whatever into the corner and then the next day they're there and you don't have tools lying all over the place right and then you know Keep your kids out of those work areas, obviously. You know, you don't want to risk anything or them getting exposed to anything that maybe isn't that potentially harmful for an adult, but as a, you know, as an infant or a toddler, it can be a little bit more detrimental. So, you know, there's ways certainly to uh, protect your kids as much as possible. The idea is to minimize risk, right? Stuff happens all the time. Stuff happens every day. You do your best to try and childproof and baby-proof, but you know, nothing's 100%, but you try and cover all your bases and check all your boxes. You just do a walkthrough of your home. You crawl on the floor. You walk around. You slide hands around. And you just find room by room everything that's potentially dangerous. 
write it down and knock it all out. Go get the stuff and knock it out because it's all this stuff is really easy. Yeah. And I think, uh, don't overwhelm yourself with it. You know, you can obviously do all the things that we're talking about, but at the same time, there will be things that come up along the way that you're like, Oh, I didn't realize he could get into this. Or I didn't realize that, you know, she would do that or whatever. If you're an attentive parent and you'll see it, you'll acknowledge it, you'll make the changes, you know, it's part of the fun. You know, you realize all the things they get into that you didn't think they would. Do you have any stories yet? Have, have you had any like near death? Oh my gosh, my child. Uh, the slipping in the bathtub thing we did have happen. That was a little scary at first, but we caught, you know, I've caught him. I've caught him a lot of times <laughs> so far. It's, it's amazing. The reflexes you, you develop, you're like a cat, you know, you're like, Shoo. right. He likes to try and dive head first off the bed, you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes occasionally we'll let him come up on the bed with us just like in the morning or whatever if, if my wife brings him in and is waking him up or waking me up if i'm you know sleeping in till 8 a.m let me warn you they all fall out of the bed at some yeah. point and you'll feel so bad well it's our bed but but like no like it was our bed both times it's so fast like yeah. well the just, one day he just like he was just sitting there like oh, i'm having a great time and then he just like and he just <laughs> jumped like he's going to dive head first off the bed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nope. And I just caught him, Got thankfully. Him. But I was like, oh, my God, what are you doing, you crazy man? Yeah. But, uh, you know, most of the he's pretty tame right now. Like it's early. Mm -hmm. He's only just started kind of walking. So I think uh, in the next week or two, we're going to have a whole new ball of wax, you know. Right. But I'm sure you have plenty of stories between your two. I, I mean, my kids are both absolutely insane uh, the most recent, because I can't even, it's the only way I can narrow it down. The most recent was, um, I have a little bin of like essential oils cause I diffuse them and I do not know how, but in the two, it's always in like the two seconds you blink. My daughter got a hold of the rose essential oil. I don't even know why I had rose and opened it and dumped it all over my couch and our house smelled like old, like golden girls, like old lady for like a month. I could not get rid of it. I washed cushions. It just smelled like worst. Like uh, that was probably one of the least pleasant ones. Like our whole house smelled like rose, fake like rose. I don't even know what fake rose smells like. Horrible. Oh. Just have a whole bunch of church ladies ever hugged you at once? No. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it smells like. Okay. One thing we didn't touch on, obviously, is firearms, right? If you have firearms at home, you know, I know there's probably a lot of, you know, our audience might have firearms at home and stuff. It's a whole other thing. Make sure you keep those locked up. I think, obviously, for any age, kids, um, make sure you keep them in a safe and however you choose to do it. Also, to that point, as, as a parent, it is okay and you never should feel uncomfortable before you drop your child off to anyone's house to have that conversation with the parent. Do you own a firearm? Is it locked up? I mean, that's like, it's very important and a good conversation to have before you leave your child anyway. at, at anyone's home. And and it's a relevant conversation right now. And um, it's scary, like the world's scary. And medicine cabinets to that degree, you know, whether or not your kids are three or 15, you know, mm -hmm. is your medicine cabinet locked up and mm -hmm. all that type of stuff? Make sure the prescriptions are are locked up and ultimately yeah you at some point it's the kid has friends and stuff it's you got to have that relationship with your children's friends parents mm -hmm. you know your and even your family and family too yeah. yeah just make sure that everything's locked up and you know i think a lot of times even for grandparents they're long past the the age of having you know kids around all the time so just making sure that the house that you're dropping them off at if it's not a daycare center, that they're outfitted to, to handle the kid as well and make sure that they're safe there. Well, uh, we hope this episode was helpful for you guys. And hopefully uh, you got some tips in as far as, you know, how to baby proof your home. Uh, if you have any questions, please call us, let us know if you have any. I know it can be a little bit overwhelming. I kind of was a little overwhelmed at first, like this whole thing. Yeah, it's all new. Right. Also to that, I'd love to hear if anyone has products they love. Maybe yeah. they can hit us up and and give us recommendations that we can feature. Yeah, so follow us on social media. Um, if you're not already, we'll put links in the show notes, or you can always reach us via voicemail at 978-709-1040, or you can always email me at Aaron at howtohome.com. And uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, 
please uh, rate it on your various podcast li- uh, listening apps, or uh, if you're choosing to watch it, hit that like button. Thank you to FilterBuy for making this episode possible. If you guys are in the market for HVAC filters, which you should be, even if you live in an apartment, make sure you check out filterby.com. And if you guys want to check out any of the childproofing products that we've talked about in today's episode, make sure you check out the links in the show notes. And uh, we will be back next week with an all new episode. So make sure you guys stick around. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. The How To Home Podcast is brought to you by filterby.com, your one-stop direct-to-consumer replacement air filter brand, and is produced in collaboration by Amassed Media Group, LLC, and Intelligent Arts and Artists. The show is executive produced by George Ruiz and Aaron Massey.